Good evening, everybody. And a very warm welcome to St. Lawrence's and especially to this festival, Songs of Praise. Um, all the words for tonight's uh, Songs of Praise will be on the screens, which are at either side and behind me here. Uh, we, we'll start in a little while with a morning hymn. We'll end with some evening hymns. And in between, there we'll, we'll sing a lot. So I hope you're all in good voice. There'll be quite a bit of singing. We'll hear some readings and we'll also listen to some music too. Uh, but before we begin, let's pray together. So let, let's pray. Father God, we ask that you bless this service and all who are present tonight, filling us with your joy and your peace. May the hymns and songs we sing and the items we listen to be a source of inspiration and encouragement, leading us to live lives that reflect your love and grace. Because we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, all the hymns tonight have been chosen by people who are here. To, I think everybody that's chosen the hymns here tonight. I do apologise if you picked a hymn and it's not included. It's just unfortunate. So please don't go, don't go home crying or anything like that at the end of the service. So as I said, we're going to start with a morning hymn. Uh, this reminds me of school. Morning is broken like the first morning. So let's stand up as we sing this song together. We'd have a first Bible reading which Jill's going to bring to us, and it's part of Psalm 104. The reading comes from Psalm 104, verses 1 to 5, 10 to 14, 19, and 24. Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendour and majesty. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes winds his messengers. Flames of fire his servants. He set the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. He makes springs pour water into the ravines and it flows between the mountains. They give water to all the beasts of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds of the sky nest by the waters. They sing among the branches. He waters the mountains from his upper chambers. The land is satisfied by the fruit of his work. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for people to cultivate. 
bringing forth fruit, food from the earth. He made the moon to mark the seasons, and the sun knows when, it, when to go down. How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Morning is Broken reminds us of uh, the creation, God's creation, as does the hymn that we're going to sing next. I think we've done um, songs of praise now for several years, and I think each year this has been the hymn that most people have requested. This also talks about creation, but it also reminds us of things, all the things besides, including what God has done for us. How great thou art. So let's stand and sing this together.
how great thou art, how great thou art. Just as we stand, maybe you'd like to think for a moment or two, or reflect for a moment or two, or pray for a moment or two, as we give thanks for the wonder of creation. So let's just be quiet while we do that. Please sit down. We're going to listen to a piece of organ music now. Uh, Linda's going to be playing something on the organ for us. It's something that's called Toccata, and it's from the Plymouth Suite by Percy Whitlock.
That was absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much, Linda. And Frank, the page turner over as well. We can give them another round of applause. Because Linda's playing almost throughout. It's, it's a hard night for her. <laughs> we come to our second Bible reading now. This is from, also from the Psalm, Psalm 35. And Alison's going to come and read this to us. As Andrew said, reading two is from verses from Psalm 35, beginning to read at verse 17. How long, Lord, will you look on? Rescue me from their ravages, my precious life from these lions. I will give you thanks in the great assembly. Among the throngs, I will praise you. Do not let those gloat over me who are my enemies without a cause. Do not let those who hate me without reason maliciously wink the eye. They do not speak peaceably, but devise false accusations against those who live quietly in the land. They sneer at me and say, Aha! Aha! With our own eyes we have seen it. May those who delight in my vindication shout for joy and gladness. May they always say, the Lord be exalted, who delights in the well-being of his servant. My tongue will proclaim your righteousness, your praises all day long. Before Paul turns to the next slide, but he's already done it, I was going to ask if uh, you might be able to think what hymn might come next after that psalm. And Annie knows because she's seen the order, of, <laughs> the order of service. But it talks about praising God with our lips and with our tongues. And no um, songs of praise service like this would be a songs of praise service without several hymns written by Charles Wesley. And so the one that goes with this is um, Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. It's one of many hymns written by Charles and he and his brother John became friends with a group of Moravian Christians. The Moravians uh, will occur later on in our Songs of Praise too. They became friends as they returned by ship to England from the American colonies. And one of the Moravian leaders was a man named Peter Bowler a man that the Wesleys much admired for his deep faith. And it was Bowler that said this, O brother Wesley, the Lord has done so much for my life. Had I a thousand tongues, I would praise Christ Jesus with every one of them. And it's those words and the words from the psalm that inspired Wesley to write this hymn. So we shall stand to sing. Not quite a thousand of us here, but we can make as much noise as a thousand. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise. Let's stand.
Please sit down. Some excellent singing there, I must say. Uh, one of the oldest members of our congregation is Louis Wally. Louis, at the moment, is in a, a care home at Asprey Mere in Congleton, and she's going to introduce from there our next song. Hello, my name's Phil Ellis, and this is Louis Wally, my mother in law. Louis is currently in Asprey Mere care home, and tonight she's chosen her favourite hymn which is Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. Louis, perhaps you could tell us why you've chosen this. I've chosen this then because it is very calm and comforting. I find it that way. Okay, thank, thank you, you very everybody. Much. Thank you everyone for caring and for all your prayers. Thank you. So let's stand again as we sing, Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. Let's just again hold a moment or two quiet as we think about that. And please sit down. So we're moving to the middle section of our songs of praise and the middle section of songs focuses really on the basis of our Christian faith, that Jesus died for us, that he rose from the dead and that one day we too will rise and be with him. And the first hymn that's in this section is a very well known hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross on Which the Prince of Glory Died, My Richest Gain I Count But Loss and pour contempt on all my pride. 
If you're finding it difficult to stand so much, it's quite okay to sit while we sing these hymns. The problem is you might not be able to see the words on the screen. But otherwise, please stand and we'll sing this hymn together. When I survey... Please sit down. So we're going to have our third Bible reading now, which Jim's going to come and read for us from Ephesians chapter 1. Paul <coughs> writes to the Ephesians. <coughs> For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. <clears throat> I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is evoked, invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything 
in every way. Our next song picks up some themes from that reading. It's probably not as well known as some of the hymns that we're singing tonight. It's, <clears throat> it's called Above All Powers, Above All Kings. Uh, we'll sing it through twice. So if you don't know it the first time through, you will by the time we do it again. So let's stand and sing together. sit down again it's time to take a little bit of a break from the singing now um, St Lawrence's has got a partnership with a church in Kenya it's in a small village in a rural area and the choirs at that church which is called St Paul's Siongila have been recording some music and some songs to tell other people about their saviour and they've hired a specialist company to, to record these professionally for them we're going to hear one of those songs now and the song's called Jesus at the Cross the words are in Kikamba which is the language that's spoken in that particular area in, in Kenya and because it's in Kikamba uh, I guess if I ask you to put your hand up probably nobody will say that they can speak Kikamba fluently or understand it so I'm going to give you the gist of what this song's about so it's, uh, it goes something like this when Jesus was at the cross he was punished so that we can have an everlasting life. And then there's a chorus that goes through it which says, there is a need to love this Jesus because he loved us with so much love. 
And then he was whipped, stabbed with a spear and abused because of you and me. His blood is so powerful as it cleanses our sins, even the most sinful ones. Come to Jesus and be saved. Come now and get a new life because he is the true way and everlasting life. There is a need to love this Jesus because he loved us with so much love. Now this, this song is a, a, a really catchy number and if you were listening to it in Kenya, it would be really loud. So I'm going to say to Frank at the back, the volume needs to be up with this, it's quite loud. And uh, uh, the choir is mainly made up of Kenyan ladies and Kenyan ladies have got very, very, very loud voices, particularly when they're singing. So we need to get the full picture of that. So we'll have a listen to the song. It lasts for about seven or eight minutes. Uh, but it's worth, and if you fancy getting up and uh, dancing along with it, I'm afraid I won't be joining you because I've got a bad knee. But, <laughs> but, but if you want to do that, feel free to do that. There are no restrictions at all. Thank you. <laughs>
I'm glad we've given them a round of applause because this service is being live streamed and it's quite possible that they could, somebody from Siongila could be watching this. So if you are, a very warm welcome to our service tonight and thank you again. We're going back to Charles Wesley again now for the second of his hymns, this time, And Can It Be? So, <laughs> so let's stand as we sing this together. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood?
Please sit down. I wonder whether anybody knows who this man is. Any guesses? Nope. All right, let's have a look then, Paul. So he's Count Nicholas Ludwig von Zinzendorf. I thought that name would trip off your tongue. He's actually one of my heroes. I've got various, various heroes who've lived down the centuries. Uh, Nicholas von Zinzendorf lived in the 18th century. And he's an interesting character. He um, had a huge estate in Saxony in Germany and he shared that with over 600 Moravian refugees. I told you the Moravians were going to come back into the service again at some point or other. And he, he, they were fleeing from religious persecution in the Czech Republic. And he called his estate Herrenhut, which means the Lord's watchful care. And the Count encouraged all refugees staying on his estate to cultivate the discipline of prayer, Bible reading, and fellowship with Jesus, which then ignited a passion for missions, resulting in 226 refugees moving to foreign lands as missionaries. Now the Wesleys come back into the story again now, because though not refugees, um, evangelists and hymn writers John and Charles Wesley both stayed at Herrenhut for a period of spiritual rest. But the Count's influence didn't stop there. Zinzendorf practiced what he preached and he faithfully prayed and he studied the scripture and he wrote quite a lot of hymns of devotion himself, including the next one that we're going to sing. This is one of my favorite hymns. So I, you can tell that I've chosen this one. <laughs> and it's called Jesus, Thy Blood and Righteousness. I imagine it was re originally written in German and it was Wesley who translated it into English. So we'll stand and sing Jesus, thy blood and righteousness. Let's stand together.
please sit down. We're going to have our fourth Bible reading now, which Phil is going to bring to us. It's from Psalm 103. And after that, Will is going to share some words with us. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not, not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? Who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like the evils? Eagles. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. The steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you have mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Good evening, everybody. Uh, for those that know, so my name's Will. I'm the vicar here. Um, this is my first experience of Songs of Praise, and it's a fantastic, isn't it? Um, my wife was telling me how she was talking to someone about today and saying, you know, we've got songs of praise in the evening. And um, this person said to her, is it the real songs of praise? <laughs> and she said, no, it's even better. It's, sh <laughs> it's Shuff's songs of praise. Um, and so this tonight, this songs of praise, uh, Shuff said to me before the, uh, a few days ago, he said, right, will I have a request? Well, I have three, really, um, and these are them. So the first one is, will um, you play and sing, you know, bless 10,000 Reasons, the song, Bless the Lord, O My Soul, 10,000 Reasons. I said, yeah, that's fine. And he said, okay, and will you do a little talk about it? I said, yeah, that's absolutely fine. He said, right, you need to keep it at five minutes at most, was the other thing that he said. And um, so here we go. So I'm on a countdown because Shuff is timing me. Um, those of you, how many of you know the song, 10,000 Reasons, just out of curiosity? Okay. Um, it's, a more, uh, it's a more recent song. It's more contemporary. Um, it was written in 2011. And the guy that wrote it, Matt Redman, um, he actually, when he wrote it, he spent a few days in his local chapel working on some new material with his uh, Swedish co-writer. And they'd been working for 15 hours on various songs, and it was 1.30 a.m. in the morning. And several times during the session, um, Matt Redman's co-writer, Myron, had wanted to play Redman a few chords that he'd kind of had an idea, but Matt Redman rebutted him and said, no, we've, we've got already got stuff that we're working on. We're not introducing more stuff in as well. Let's work with what we've got. And in the end, um, Myron isn't normally a pushy person, but did kind of push it tried several times, and Matt Redman decided in the end, right, go on, let's have a little listen. Myron played Redman what was to become the chorus of 10,000 Reasons, and it released an automatic response in Redman that just matching a few words that he'd already written down, he took inspiration from the opening verse to Psalm 103 that we've just listened to. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. There were other songs that Matt Redman had written. And there was a similar one, Blessed Be Your Name, where he wrote really describing how difficult life can be sometimes. And even in the midst of trials and things and difficulties we face, to still 
praise and worship God. In 2016, there was a Church Times interview and Redmond noted how everyone experiences pain, heartache, stress, including Christians, because we're like everyone else. We all experience those same emotions. And noting that the Psalms, there is a huge number of the Psalms which are lament Psalms, which means to lament and cry out to God when things aren't okay. And this is what Matt Redmond said. When you start to sing about troubles, you very quickly start to journey into the compassionate, kind, generous, caring heart of God. Even in the midst of trials, we can worship. And this song, well, it's been played countless times now in lots of countries. It's become an anthem in many ways of worship. And so much so, that actually, it's inspired many. And a book was written and collated of stories of where this song has been an inspiration. And here's two of those stories from that book. The first one. One story was that of Reuben Hill, a student at London's Imperial College who was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Surgeons operated on him using groundbreaking technology, and he had to be awake during part of the procedure so that they could check that his speech was not being harmed. As the last pieces of his tumor were removed, he sang lines from Redmond's song. The sun comes up. It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass, whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. That was one of the stories. Are you ready for another? Okay, here's another story from that book. Another story was of two prisoners, Andrew and Mayu, who had spent 10 years in a Bali jail for drug smuggling. While there, they'd become Christians and experienced a radical change of life, inspiring others to the same transformation. However, as their crime carried the death penalty, they were still due to face a firing squad. And as they stood against the wall, blindfolded and facing the guns, they began to sing. And on that day, when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come, Still my soul will sing your praise unending 10,000 years and then forevermore. It's beautiful, isn't it? And those are the words of this song. Redmond has admitted that 10,000 years was a bit of a nod to the final verse of Amazing Grace. And he was mentioned in various interviews and performances that this verse particularly in Amazing Grace at the end, the failing strength that's mentioned in it, the end drawing near, was influenced by a verse. Shuff's going to like this one because he's mentioned them already a couple of times. None other than John Wesley wrote. John uh, Wesley dictated this on his deathbed. In age and feebleness extreme, who shall a helpless worm redeem? Jesus, my only hope thou art, Strength of my failing flesh and heart. Oh, could I catch one smile from thee and drop into eternity? And so as we sing this song, whether you know it or not, these are words that we proclaim because we all go through those moments, those trials in life, those testing times, times of joy and times of weeping, Times of celebration, times of stress and distress. We all go through them. And in the midst of them all, may we still be singing forevermore. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And so we're going to sing together.
Please sit down. We're almost getting to our evening hymns now. Not quite there yet, but very, very soon. Um, Joe Kabuba, who's mentioned on this next slide here, is one of the organists at All Saints Cathedral in Nairobi. Uh, and when I've been in Nairobi, I love to go and worship there because they have about... 11 services and the, the, it's a huge cathedral and the place is full for each of the services there it must hold probably several thousand people for it, for each service it, it is huge um joe's one of the organists there and he's recorded a piece of organ music and he's done it especially for our songs of praise tonight it's a piece called elegy in b flat you'll recognize it i'm sure by george thalban ball he introduces the piece he may be listening to himself playing it now, who knows? <laughs> Good evening and greetings from All Saints Cathedral, Nairobi. My name is Joe Kabuba, one of the organists here. And I'll be playing an organ piece, Elegy by G George Thalben Ball, on the newly refurbished uh, pipe organ in this main sanctuary. Um, this organ is a three manual, Pipe organ has been here for about 70 years or so, and it's just undergone some major restoration in the UK. And I'm happy to share some music with you. And I hope this blesses you and your congregation as you have your songs of praise music evening. Do enjoy.
And so we come to our evening hymn, and the hymn is The Day Thou Gavest, Lord, Is Ended. And uh, we'll stand to sing this hymn together. Please sit down. In a second, Will is going to uh, pray for us and bring us a blessing. After that, we're going to sing a blessing. It's a blessing that used to be used uh, uh, in Billy Graham crusades. May God's blessing surround you each day. So we'll just continue with that when Will has finished. But before uh, Will gives us the final prayer, I just want to say thank you ever so much for everybody who's come along tonight. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've got no voice left at the, <laughs> at the end of time. Uh, a special thank you to those, to the singers. A special thank you to Linda and also to the people that have done the reading. And also there are refreshments at the end. So to Jean and her team at the end. I think all those people need a round of applause now. <laughs> And so we'll, we'll pray and then we'll sing the final song together. Thank you. Um, just before I do pray, uh, just one other thank you, really. So I was going to say thank you to everyone uh, involved, but the other person is to Shuff as well for pulling it all together. So should we say thank you to him? Now, the other thing that I just I sat there, I just thought might be nice, is actually, so there is the possibility that some of the people from Sion Giller and for Joe from the, from the cathedral may uh, see on the video. So 
well, thank you to you if you are watching. But do you know what? I thought it might be nice if we send a video specifically to them to say thank you. Does that sound okay? So what I'm thinking is I've got a phone in my pocket and I'm going to take like a video where you'll all be behind me. Is that all right? Yeah. And we'll say thank you to our brothers and sisters in Sion Gilla at St. Paul's and we'll say thank you to Joe uh, at the cathedral in Niobe as well. And then you can all give a round of applause. Does that sound all right? Yeah. All right, so we'll do this. Hang on, this is my wife's phone and it's not doing it now. <laughs> Bear with me. Oh no, there we go. There we go. Right, so we're all there. Okay. So this is to our brothers and sisters at St. Paul's in Siongilla and also to Joe at the Cathedral in Nairobi. We just wanted to say a massive thank you for your input tonight for our Songs of Praise service. And so we just want to say thank you uh, and give you a round of applause. So thank you very much. May God bless you and may he keep you. Thank you. There you go. Thank you very much. So we can send that to them. I'll give that to Chef after and he can send that on. So thank you. Um, and so a final prayer of blessing for each of you. May God's praises be ever on your lips. May the Lord bless each of you. May he keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you, to be gracious to you. And as he blesses you from that place, may his praise and worship overflow through you, to him and to everyone you meet. May God's light and love shine through you. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. Bless you. Down, please stay for refreshments before you go in peace, go in love, and go in joy. Enjoy the refreshments. It would be useful if um, you didn't, if you pick up your tea and cake or whatever Jean has made at the back there, and then come away from the table so that people can get there. That will be easier to operate. But thank you again, everyone, for coming. Thank you.